Good morning. It is day 12 in our study of 1 John. We're in 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to be finishing out chapter 2 today in verses 28 and 29. Uh, we're going to see a, a, a few familiar words that John has been bringing up several times over, and uh, just the, the same kind of themes. But we're also going to see some, some uh, similar wording to uh, some of the writings of Paul, and I'll actually mention that when we get to it. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 28 starts out, he says, Now little children, again we talked about that, how, how John feels like this fatherly spiritual figure for those he's writing to. Abide in him. That's that idea, again, of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Somebody who abides in Christ not only has faith in, in the gospel, not only says that they've accepted Christ as their Savior, not only has, has experienced uh, the forgiveness of sins, but they also are living it. They're living the Word of God. They're following God's commands. So someone who abides in Him, uh, that when He appears, that we may have confidence and not be ashamed at his coming. You know, I, I, I see a lot of parallels here to some of the things that Paul has written. You go back into Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. That, 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 uh, that gospel of Christ, we shouldn't be ashamed of it. Uh, we shouldn't uh, have to hide it. In fact, we should be proudly living it so that everybody can see. And what he says is, you know, when, when uh, Christ comes again, we're going to have this uh, confidence when we live out the truth of Scripture. You know, we're, we're going to look at it and, and Christ is going to come home or come to bring us home. And uh, we're going to stand before him. And if we're faithfully living out his commands, we, he's going to look at us and say, you know what? You've done everything that I've asked you to do. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I mean, that's exactly what we all want to hear. When Christ comes again, don't you just want to hear him say, well done? Or would you rather the idea of, uh, you didn't kind of live up to what you were supposed to live up to. You said it, but you didn't actually do it. You know, those, those are things that we don't want to hear when we meet Christ. We want to have a confidence, a boldness to say, I am so glad to be here. I have been ready to meet you. My life has lived that out. That every single day that I'm living in the light of, I'm going to meet him today. And I want him to know everything. I want to talk with him directly. I want to be there. I don't want to be concerned about the, the, the missed opportunities or the things that I should have done and didn't do. I'm going to have that confidence that I'm going to uh, just have that face-to-face -face relationship with Jesus Christ that I've been so longing for. You know, I'm, uh, I'm abiding in my relationship. I'm trying to, to live out everything that I believe, but we're still parted that we're, you know, we don't see Christ face-to-face. -face. We don't see God face-to-face, -face. but, you know, one day we will, and we should be looking forward to that day with great confidence. In verse 29, he says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And you have to be really careful about this because we live in a day and age, especially in Christianity, where legalism can be very, very popular. Legalism is, you know, where we kind of look at the rules of Scripture and say, If I do those things and I become holy, I become set apart, I, I become righteous. And, you know, the whole idea is it's not about the doing of the stuff that brings salvation. When we're talking about how Christ is righteous, he's righteous because he's holy, he's perfect. But you know what? Even, even within salvation, even when we accept Christ as our Savior, he forgives all our sins. Are, is it us who is righteous? Is it, is it the things that we do that made us set apart? No, it's, it's the righteousness of Christ. We're covered over. When, when, when God looks at us, he's not seeing us. He's seeing the righteousness of Christ. Because scripture tells us that all of our righteousnesses, everything good that we do is like a filthy rag. It's like a dirty, contaminated cloth. And that is something that we don't want, you know, we would look at and go, ew. You know, and God's saying, hey, all the good stuff that you think you did, 
to get yourself in a good shape, to, to try and get yourself into heaven, to try and, and right this, this wrong relationship that you have with me, everything you tried to do looks like that nasty cloth. That you you know you're you're prizing it, you're holding on to it, and, and and you're saying that this is the best you have to give me. God says, I don't want that. What we have as believers in Jesus Christ, that as believers of the gospel, we have the righteousness of Christ imputed on us. We we wear it like a cloak. It covers us. And when he says everyone uh, who practices righteousness is born of him, this is, this is the evidence of salvation. See, it's never about the doing of stuff. It's never about following the rules to get salvation. It's not necessarily to say that we shouldn't obey God's commands. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what John's saying. That's not what Paul ever says. In fact, they're very adamant that that's not the message. That we don't, we don't have a license to sin just because God saves and, and we can do stuff to make it work. No, oh, no, no, no. What he's saying here is everyone that makes a habit of righteousness, everybody who makes a habit of following the commands of Scripture, those who have committed their lives to that, those who have not only exercised belief but now put that belief into action, those are the people that you know are saved, that you, that you know are born of Him. So it's not, an, it's, a, it's not part of the salvation process for us to do these things, but it is an evidence of it. We do these things because of our salvation, not to gain our salvation. It's a really important distinction as we close out chapter 2. Be very aware that, that you know, even in our own lives, we need to be sure that we are in Scripture and that we are following Scripture. I fail at this all the time, and I've got to make sure that I'm in the Word, that I know the Word, and that I'm living the Word. I'm challenging you to do the same thing. It's not easy. It won't ever be easy. But, but, we can be sure, we can have a confidence when we meet Him if that is how we uh, pattern our lives, if we pattern our lives in following God's commands, when you see him face to face, you'll be more than ready to meet him. I hope you enjoyed today. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.